which you guys that they would take a look at how to verify your Windows ISO and make sure it's genuine. Now, a lot of people will download ISOs off the internet, and maybe it's an older version that you're looking for, but a lot of people don't realize there's a massive security risk when downloading ISOs off the internet. You have to be super careful because people can make changes to them and add files to them or even code to them and malicious code, which can actually cause you major problems. So it's always best to download the ISOs from Microsoft themselves. Now, occasionally people want to download Windows Lite versions or even other versions or, or older versions of Windows from other sources. So is this OK to do? Well, it is OK to do, but it's a bit risky. But you need to make sure that you check uh, the hash or the checksum uh, number on there to make sure it's identical with Microsoft's versions. Now, Microsoft will release these uh, ISOs to the general public. You download them. And basically, if the checksum matches, the files are identical. That's the thing. You need to make sure that they are exactly identical to the ones that you can get from Microsoft. So if someone has tampered with the file or there's an error with that file or any changes occur after the checksum was made by Microsoft, the calculated the hash value of that data will also change. If In this case, the SHA256 hashes that Microsoft provides allow the PowerShell user to verify that these Windows Microsoft uh, ISO files are basically legit and they haven't been tampered with or corrupted in any way, shape or form. So it's important because we use them to check files for integrity and make sure they are secure and everything's OK. So you can see I've got two ISO files here, one which is from Microsoft and one which I added applications to. Now, of course, this means that other people can do exactly the same and use this command to check them inside PowerShell. You can check the MD5, SHA1, SHA256, SHA512 as well. And you can do this also with a PowerShell command as well. So. It's super important if you're downloading these from an unknown source that you make sure that the hash is exactly identical to Microsoft's hash. Now, these will change with different versions of Windows 10 and different versions of Windows 11. The hash file will change. So you need to make sure that it is exactly identical. If it isn't, that means that someone has either tampered with the file or uh, made changes to that file. And that's important because obviously, just like I showed you with two ISO files that I've got, I've added programs to that file. Now, these could be malicious programs. It could be code, could be anything. So you have to be very careful with what files you're downloading and using. This is why it's important to download them from the source, which is Microsoft. So I've done a little check here and you can see this is the hash for this particular Windows ISO file, which I downloaded from Microsoft some time ago. You can see them here. So I'd advise you to download them, keep them, and keep them safe. That way, if you want to go back to an older version, you can do. And I know that the programs I've added in this ISO are safe. And that is the reason why I never really share uh, Windows Lite uh, versions on the internet. And that's why I don't share any sort of WinPEs or anything like that, because they could be embedded with all sorts of stuff uh, that people have been tampering with them. So it's always important that if you are going to be installing this as your main operating system, it's always best to create the file yourself. That way, you know it's 100% safe. You download the ISO from Microsoft and you make the changes you want to that ISO. Don't use someone else's ISO off the internet uh, unless the um, hash file will be identical. Unfortunately, if it's been tampered with, i.e., parts have been removed, the ISO uh, will be different to the Microsoft ISO. The hash number will change, and that means it has been tampered with, and it could be uh, risky to use that particular ISO from someone else. That's why it's important to always uh, create your own ones. Now, you can also use these commands to check the uh, hash on these, which are inside the PowerShell command. There's a PowerShell command there. I'll leave them in the video description. You will need to change the path to the ISO file of the one you want to check and you can go ahead and check these and you can get these uh, hash files from Microsoft. They used to release them all the time, but now they seem to stop releasing these hash uh, numbers. 
I'm not sure why, maybe it's a security reason, but you can also do it very easily with third-party software, just like 7-Zip. If you've got 7-Zip on your system, you can right-click on a ISO file, go to 7-Zip here and choose CRC SHA, and then choose the version you want to check. Let's just say you want to check uh, the 256. Uh, you can click on this, and it will then give you that hash code right here. And this should uh, be cross-referenced with the ISO that you've got from Microsoft. Now, of course, if you only ever download ISOs from Microsoft, then you don't really have to worry about all of this stuff uh, too much, unless you want to check to make sure there's no sort of error codes or anything like that with that ISO. So you can check other things on here as well. With 7-Zip, there's plenty of other programs out there on the internet that you can use, but be careful what programs you download and install on your system. 7-Zip is a tried and trusted program that's been around for a very long time and it's used to compress files and uncompress files as well. Anyway, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Remember, if you are downloading ISOs from an unknown source, always cross-reference to make sure the hash is the same as Microsoft version. If not, use your own and create your own ISOs yourself. That way you're 100% safe uh, using that ISO. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Also, drop on our Discord server if you fancy a chat. If you've joined my YouTube members group and you're on my Discord server and you want access to the voice chat to chat with me, then you need to let me know in the general chat area. I'll be happy to give you the correct role. Also, I will be having some giveaways on our Discord server for people that are in my YouTube members group. So make sure you are on our uh, Discord server for that. Just want to say a quick special shout out to David Lees, Walid, also RTX Brody, Edward Kelly, Albert Hewson, Celtic Lad, PC Repair Tech, Vitality, Phil's Computer Repair, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, and Welsh Tony. I really do appreciate the support, guys, and I shall see you on the Discord server for a chat, or I shall see you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.